Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us here on People in Politics. This is our first episode of 2015, and we're very honored today to have our first guest of 2015, Mayor William Healy of the city of Canton. Hello, thank you for having me today. Thank you for coming on board. We're very excited to have you and learn more about your past, how you became mayor, and why you decided to get in politics. So now your friends call you Jamie, though, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so do you mind if I call you Jamie? No, call me mayor. Call me mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I will. That's uh, funny because uh, when people come to the office and they'll say, um, hey, I've known Bill for a long time. My staff immediately knows they, they don't know me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, everybody knows me as Jamie that uh, I grew up with and, and you know have, have gotten real close this, to. Now, did you grow up in the city of Canton? I did, yes. Okay. I was born in Canton, uh, went to grade school, high school, you know, all, all through. I went to Camp McKinney high school. Yeah, go there Pops. you go. Um, and, uh, and then from there, I went to uh, Kent State to start campus. Okay. Uh, I was working locally. And then uh, I got a job that actually had me uh, transfer uh, out of the area. So I had left the area uh, for a number of years. Okay. And, and what uh, did you do that took you out of the area? Well, I, I was working with a, with a, a national company, um, and I became a, dis- a district rep and, and a regional rep. And then I ended up going with distribution and then a manufacturing. And so I was in uh, sales and marketing, uh, home building uh, materials and so on. Okay. Um, and then it, 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 at some point then I decided to set up my own business and I opened up my own strategic marketing consulting business. And oh, wow. then I represented clients uh, in the industry uh, in, in a marketing role and um, sales and marketing role where I would help them um, try to restructure their business and, and, and move forward. Basically, okay. companies that were struggling, uh, I was work with to kind of revitalize them. Oh, great. And yeah. you traveled all over the Midwest for that? I traveled all over the country. In fact, one of my, my major clients was a Canadian company, and my job was to set up use distribution for them. So I was doing some international business, and um, and I'd be in Maine one day, and California the next, Florida, Midwest, whatever. And so a little bit of traveling, but um, it was really, really interesting because, uh, you know, I was always striving to achieve something that they said couldn't be done. Well, sure. you can never get this company in that account, and, and I'd go after that account. and. You know, try to make things happen. So it was, it was very challenging. It was fun. That's great. And you're an entrepreneur too. So you opened up your own company and that, yes. that, was, that was great. It's always fun it, being it an was. entrepreneur. We all know that out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, while I was doing that, I also put myself through school because I didn't finish uh, uh, my undergrad when I left for the, for the job. And so I went back to uh, finish my undergrad um, in South Jersey at uh, Rowan University. Okay. And sure. then as soon as I finished there, I applied and got accepted into NYU and went to the Stern School of Business at New York University. So, wow, great um, for spent you! Spent a couple of years in, in, in grad school and uh, and then from there, then I was able to return home. So you have this great private sector experience. What yes. made you want to get into the public sector? Well, you were mayor first. Right? No, okay. I, I didn't want to get into the public sector. In fact, my father, uh, that was his career. My father was an elected official. He was a state legislator in Ohio for Earth. 26 years. Oh, wow. Um, so in the state house? In the state house, okay. yeah. And uh, so that was his passion. And, and so I kind of grew up in an atmosphere and was very familiar with it. And, um, you know, politics is, is not a, it's a nasty game. It is. And, and I thought, you know what, I just want to go do my thing. And, and, and I was doing that. And uh, I had a very successful career. And I, I, I got married and had a family and, you know, have a beautiful family, got a great education. And, and we had a nice home and, you know, got to travel the world. And, you know, so I, we were very happy, and um, and I decided I didn't like happiness and wanted to get back into government. <laughs> 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 no, actually, uh, when my, my, my father had passed away, and uh, he was sick in, in, uh, in the Cleveland Clinic, and I um, got the call that, that he wasn't going to make it. And uh, so we came back and, and, and had to deal with that, and like any family, you have to, to experience those things, unfortunately. Sure. But so, so when I went back home to Canton, and, and keep in mind, I would visit Canton all the time. You know, my family was there. We were there for the holidays. We were there for election cycles and so on. But this time was different because when you go home, if your parents don't live in your town, when you go visit your parents, you go to their house. Mm-hmm. And you have dinner and you hang out, maybe spend the night or whatever. And then when you get up in the morning, you head home. You know, you go to the airport or wherever you're going. So when I came to Canton and, and, and while I was traveling and out of the area, um, you know, I would come here, but I didn't experience Canton. And so when my father passed, I spent an extensive period of time there because we had to deal with the funeral and other things. And it got uh, the opportunity to go around town and meet friends I went to school with and see family members I hadn't seen for a while and really get to see the community. And I was absolutely in shock at what had happened to Canton, Ohio. Wow. Um, It was, you know, when I traveled, uh, I bragged about Canton. I'm from Canton McKinley, you know, the city of Canton, the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, sure. first year, every, every, every football game every year was played in my high school stadium. You got to turn on the TV, that's my home. Yeah. You know, it was exciting to talk about Canton because that was my, my memories, my pride. And, and when I came back, it was a totally different town. Um, you know, there, there was businesses boarded up, houses were empty, 
Um, gangs were uh, uh, visually active in the streets, and wow. crime was high. Uh, I mean, it was just it was it was bad. The 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 place had fallen so much in a period of about 10 to 12 years. Uh, it was just again I didn't recognize it. And you 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 told me about this commercial where it kind of got to you, right? I mean, that could, do you want to tell the viewers yeah, about that because I'm people, sure most of us will remember it. Yeah, because what happened is is you know it was it was really inside me. I I looked at my town closely and said. Wow, this is this is bad. Something's got to change. And and all I could think of was that commercial we saw when we were young, where there was an Indian on the side of the road, and I think it was around the late seventies, early eighties at that time point. And at that time, litter was prevalent. It was everywhere. And uh, he's standing on the side of the road with all this litter, and and he's sitting there with it. And all you saw was a tear in his eye. And you know the real message was was what what happened to my home? What happened to my land? And that's exactly what I felt when I came back to Canton. It was like what what happened to my home? And then I started feeling guilty, and I'm thinking, you know, somebody needs to do something about this. And and I told my wife, I said, I, I feel I feel guilty because I had left and I had done well and 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 um, you know had success in education and family and travel and, and work and you know and I, I I achieved things that people strive for in their lives and and I, I just felt like I'd left uh, and abandoned my city. And uh, I told my wife, I said, I don't know if my my, my dad's spirit jumped in my body. Or, or what? All I know is I feel like I, I should be here, and and I should try instead of asking somebody else to step up and do something. Maybe it's my time to to try to get back. So this isn't a job for you. This this is a passion. It, it really being is. Involved in politics yeah. And can. yeah. And then the other thing that happened uh, uh, right about that time that I was there for for my father's uh, funeral and, and and you know getting exposed to the community again, um, the the report cards came out as they do every year annually, mm-hmm. and right at that time. Um, the report card showed that the uh, Kansas City Schools graduation rate was like 53 percent. Wow. And, and I just thought, how is that even possible that, that you know, half the kids in the 2000s, you know, early 2000s, half the kids in Canton, Ohio are not graduating high school? And it just blew my mind. And, and I had taken so much pride in going back to school and getting my undergraduate degree and getting my master's degree. And, you know, education meant so much to me. And then I'm watching what happened in my hometown where half the kids couldn't even get through high school. And, and I thought that that's just that's unacceptable. So, what was the first position uh, that you ran for? Well, oddly enough, uh, at the same time, uh, the 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 mayor at the time announced that he was not going to be seeking reelection. And so, um, I I, I um, um, you know kind of watched real closely because I knew the political scene, mm-hmm. and uh, and all the names that were popping up of the people who wanted to to be mayor were the same people that were in elected office when I left town 12, 14, 15 years earlier. Wow. And so I'm thinking, these are the people who were in charge when the city fell apart. And either they didn't know, or, you know, because it might have been just a gradual change, so they didn't see it, or, or their, their policies aren't working or whatever, but now they want to be the ones in charge. And I'm thinking, how do you put somebody in charge who was involved in the downfall? Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's when I was convinced that I wanted to run, and I actually uh, um, told my wife, and, and uh, my wife was in grad school at the time, and so I, I pulled a petition. I actually signed a lease on a building and pulled a petition the same day. Wow. And ran for mayor, and I lost by about 100 votes. Oh, wow. And, um, and so, and then my wife was still living in the East Coast, and, and my business was, my, my main client was in Canada, and I was still traveling around, and I'd fly in and campaign and fly out, and, you know, so it might not have been the ideal time to run, mm-hmm. but it was the ideal time to make a statement. Sure. And uh, it was very, very close race. And, um, and, and, and then others in the area uh, had talked to me about, hey, you know, you did really well. Uh, why don't you run for state rep? And I said, well, I really wanted to help Canton. Yeah. And the response was, well, you can still do that from the state, you know, with the state policies. And I said, well, yeah, maybe I can. And so I ran for state rep the following year and won. And then I, I ran for re-election. And then when the uh, mayor's race cycled around four years later, I ran and I won. So two terms in the Ohio House, then you ran for mayor, again yes. for mayor, and you won this time. Yes, and then I ran, I ran. I ran for re-election uh, four years ago, and now we're up again this year. So you're up in 2015. 2015. Good. Yes. Yeah. So this I'm running for now. My third term as mayor. Good. Good for you. Now, what do you see as one of your biggest accomplishments? Your greatest accomplishments? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, we we've really got a, a lot of different things to talk about. Um, you know, we, we've we've dropped crime by over 25 percent since I've taken office, and again, crime was a major issue. Um, we've um, uh, the unemployment rate is as of, as we sit here, it's the lowest it has been on record going back over 30 years. Wow! And it was 15 percent during the recession five years ago, and now it's 5.1. That's one of the things that you saw when you came yeah. back that you really wanted to change. Economic development, job creation, and anything we can do to help uh, the community with with uh, uh, jobs and, and, and opportunity. So we've we've had a huge influx there. 
uh, in Canton. Canton is, is doing much better. Um, but, but I think, you know, because of my passion with education and because of the school situation at the time, I made education uh, one of my, my, my staples. I call it the four pillars of, of a strong community, and education is one of them. I always go out there and talk about the uh, jobs, the economy. I talk about the safety and crime in the mm-hmm. community. I talk about the strength of your neighborhoods, and I talk about education. And, and no community is going to thrive without those four items being strong. Those are the four pillars. Education, though, to me, everything revolves around that. Because if, um, if kids aren't graduating from high school, they're dropping out, what do they do? They end up in gangs sure. and, and get in trouble, and so your crime goes up. If the schools are not performing well, uh, nobody wants to buy a home in that neighborhood because you don't want to send your kids to a failing school district. Mm-hmm. So your neighborhoods start declining. And, of course, businesses don't want to locate in communities that don't have a strong workforce and, you know, kids, uh, employees that haven't graduated high school is not a good workforce in any sure. category. It's a snowball factor. So to me, the education really uh, had a major impact in every other important aspect of a strong community. So I really focused on that and started talking about that. And uh, I even had my opponents at the time say, why are you talking about education? The, the mayor doesn't oversee education. Mm-hmm. That's the school board. And I said, we should all be involved in education. It's all, you know, these are our kids, it's our family, it's our neighborhoods, it's our safety. And so I really made that uh, a major part since I've been there. And every time you hear me talk, you can hear me talk about education. And our schools have done a much, much better job. They've gotten really, really good. Kansas City Schools today, you know, l- 10 years later, less than 10 years later, is now one of the top performing inner city, inner city school districts in the state of Ohio. Oh, wow, that's great. Graduation rate uh, this past year was 89%. Um, which is, uh, you get in the 90s, you start talking about the better school districts. Sure. So we're really on the verge of becoming one of the better school districts, and it's an inter-school, inner city district. So uh-huh. it's, it's really a, a great turnaround story, and, and I've you know, tried to support as much as I could. But one of the things that I did, and I think my greatest accomplishment uh, so far, is the uh, creation of the scholarship program. We have a City of Canton scholarship program. And what this is, is uh, we partnered with and right now we have 14 colleges and universities that we have partnerships with. And it started out with three or four, and every year in the last five or six years since I started it, every year we've been able to add schools. Sure. It's a guarantee from our partner schools for scholarship money for every kid that comes out of our high schools. Wow. So if you live in the city of Canton, you graduate from our public schools, you're eligible, you, you apply with me, we fill out a form verifying that you're eligible, and when you apply to these schools, you send that in, and you're guaranteed the mayor scholarship money. That's true. And, and it could be anywhere from $1,000 up to full tuition, depending on uh, the school, your need, the program you're in. And um, it's, it's just a great, great program. So kids that are growing up in inner city with maybe a single parent who's working three jobs and barely able to, to pay the rent, they're telling their kids, unless you get a football scholarship, you're not going to college. And we now can tell that parent and that child, if you stay in school, graduate, do your best, I can guarantee you money for college. That's great. And it's, it's a great program, and, and, and it's just, to me, um, it just it, it changes people's lives. That's wonderful. Now, for the mayor of Canton to bring up football, I think you deliberately did that. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be very cool to be the mayor of the city where the Pro Football Hall of Fame is. You know, it, we really have some cool stuff. Uh, the, 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 the highlight, of course, is the Hall of Fame and, and, and what that means to us. Have and you been in the Hall of Fame games before? Uh, not, not, no, I've never. They've never suited me up and put. They me never in the game. suited yeah, you yeah, up no, to no. play one of those. I keep telling, put okay. me in, coach. Put me because in. Because you are about <laughs> six foot one, six foot two, right? I mean, yeah. you could go out there and play wide receiver. Well, I, you know, it, maybe in my prime, I could have been the ball boy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the, these are th- uh, the, the professional football players are literally the world's greatest athletes. Yeah. They're the fastest, the strongest, the biggest, the quickest. The, you know, I mean, it's just, it really is amazing the, the skills that are involved in, and, and the talent that they have on that field. And I get to see it up close, close and personal, which is yeah. exciting. But um, no, be, being the mayor of the Hall of Fame is great because I get to see everybody. I mean, all the greats come back every year. And so uh, i give you a quick story. Um, I was uh, backstage uh, for our Hall of Fame events. And if you ever want to come to the Hall of Fame, come during the festival week because all the Hall of Famers and pro football players and celebrities in town. I got pictures with Usher and oh, other guys wow. that come in. I mean, yeah, it's just you never know who's going to be there. But uh, I'm standing backstage, and we're getting ready to go on for one of the events that happens. And, and I'm back there, and I've got Frank O'Hara standing with me. i got Marcus Allen, um, Eric Dickerson, Gail Sayers, Barry wow. Sanders. Wow. Um, I mean, th- if, if, you, if you look at the um, – uh, of top 10 running backs in all-time history. These are like six of the yeah, best. Yeah, right you know, there. They've got yeah. everybody's list, right? And so uh, Marcus wasn't there yet, and we're all sitting there getting ready, and, 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 and Thurman, or um, um, Emmett Smith, because he had just Smith. got in that year. So, sure. of course, he's the all-time leader. Mm-hmm. So so we're, we're all standing there, and um, 
and we, the, 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 the school were on ESPN, and they always come in, and they, everything's by them. If you've ever done any, you know, Fox News, yeah. you, three seconds, ten seconds, two seconds, you yeah. know, they're, they're telling you. So they're counting it down for us, and, uh, you know, it was like five minutes, and then it was three minutes, one minute, and, and Marcus isn't there yet. And they're like, where's, where's Marcus? Where's Marcus? And Eric Dickerson says, uh, he says, you know what, he says, he, he's always late. He's always late, and he says, and every time he comes into somewhere late, he always says it was the airlines he just got in. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He flew in last night, so don't let him give you that. <laughs> You know, so um, I'll, I'll clean this up for television. Yeah. But, uh, so so uh, sure enough, there's like 30 seconds to go, and Marcus Allen comes running up the ramp. And I hadn't met him yet. Uh, it's the first time I got to meet him as, as the mayor. And I walk up to him, and I'm in a suit, and t- you know, and I said, Marcus, where the heck you been? And he's like, oh, my plane just landed. And the guy's just <laughs> busting out laughing. Like, you know, so, you know, this is kind of cool stuff. Yeah. So I, I, pull, I pull Franco aside. I said, I said Franco Harris, you know, Franco, I've got to ask you this. And he said, what I said, was it a catch? <laughs> <laughs> was there no comment on that one? No, no, no. He says, he says, well, Mayor, all I can tell you is I'm glad there was an instant replay. <laughs> I mean, now, how that's cool great. is that? It you is know? really cool. You know, so I mean, that's got to be one of the perks oh, of the job. Oh, yeah. Being at the pro, you know, pro so, so yeah, I, I get to see these guys. And I had a great, great afternoon with, uh, with uh, Joe Namath. Wow. And, and talk to him about some stories that we had, and I had him crack up laughing. And That's I mean, great. so it's just it's just this wonderful experience. And and you and you start building some friends with friendships with these guys that come in every year, and um, you know it's just uh, it's just really a, a wonderful experience. And, and again, if somebody's a football fan, you got to be That's in Camp Howard event. Place yeah, it's it's just wonderful. Well, Mayor, one of the things that I like to ask, and I think the viewers really appreciate it because it kind of shows who you want to be as a politician and how you see yourself grow. Um, when you talk about U.S. presidents, mm. who's your favorite U.S. president? Oh, well, that's easy. As, as the mayor of the city of Canton, Ohio, I'm, I'm required by law to say that my, my favorite president is William McKinley. <laughs> that's, that's it. Always, you got to pick the hometown boy. Exactly. Now, out of everybody that we've had on the show, you're the only one that's had the opportunity to pick the hometown yeah, boy. Yeah, and I may so be the great. only one that ever says he's the greatest president, <laughs> but uh, no, no. Uh, um, it, it, it is wonderful to be the home of there. We have the, the, the monument, the Presidential Library sure. Museum, and, and that's another attraction we have in the city. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's been so many great presidents. And obviously, when you look at what Lincoln did, that's a, a monumental. You look at, um, uh, you know, uh, JFK and, and, and the Cuban Missile Crisis and things that he accomplished in, in the short period of time he was there. You know, I think Clinton was a great president. But, but I'm gonna, I might, might fool you here on this one. Honestly, I, I think Barack Obama is going to go down as one of the great presidents of our, of our time. Okay. And, and I'll tell you, you know, if you look at what he had to deal with, he came in at the start of the worst recession in our history. I mean, you gotta go back to the Great Depression. Sure. And, and maybe the presidents at that time, you can talk about the great things they did, but that's, we don't really, we didn't live that, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. but, but seeing what he did, you know, like I said, my unemployment rate was at 15%. Wow. It's at 5.1 today. Wow. You know, the stock market's at the highest level on history, and, and it was tanking when he took office. Sure. He saved the auto industry, which is one of the most important industries in the entire country, and, and banking and, and insurance uh, during that recession. Um, you know, you look at uh, the unemployment rate across the country, it's down. Um, you know, so you, you think jobs are better, the stock market is better. Um, he created the, and introduced the, the health care that's got tens of millions of people that have health care coverage that didn't have it before. Sure. And again, history is going to show how valuable and important that was. I, I really believe that, that he's going to go down as one of the great presidents of our time. Wow. And, and, you know, I get to experience it internally uh, as the mayor to see the connections and the support and the, and the, the, the monies that they funnel, the stimulus money that they put out there. That prevented my city from going bankrupt. Wow. Point blank, if we didn't have stimulus funds at the time we had them, our city would have gone into bankruptcy, as would many of cities I'm sure across many the country. Others, yeah, and so uh, those are things that be, you know he prevented that because it didn't happen, you don't know. But I'm telling you uh, for a fact, the impact that we had because of the, the uh, legislation and the policies that he put in place uh, saved our city and allowed us to turn it into a situation where we're starting to grow and thrive now, turn around our decline, and and. Uh, I, you know, like to take full credit for everything that's happened in Canton, <laughs> but I will tell you that uh, the impact that we had from the support in Washington, we couldn't have gotten there without it. And those are the types of things that history will show uh, will make him one of our greats. And I, and I think that when you said Barack Obama, some people might think it's a controversial choice because we're looking at past presidents. 
Um, and some people were able to, you already see the history, you right. know what the past, now you're, we're going to be rewriting the history books for Obama here over the next few years, yeah. but you definitely laid out some great points. Um, I do really appreciate you coming on the show and we're honored to have you as our first guest of 2015. So thank you very much for coming on board. Thank you for having and me. And we hope to have you on uh, soon again. I, I hope to be back. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate it. And thank you to all of you as well. Thank you.